Welcome to Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, back again with another episode, y'all. Uh, mental health in prison is a big deal, y'all. Um, we don't talk about it enough. I've done a few shows about it, but we don't talk about it enough as a society. Uh, we got a lot of people in prison that uh, suffer mental health issues on medication and not on medication. Uh, today, I'm fortunate enough to have somebody that uh, I'm going to be interviewing that is actually on medication. We're going to call him John, and uh, that's not because he's afraid to uh, use his real name. This is my decision to do. Uh, I just want the brother to be comfortable, and uh, let him know how much I appreciate him uh, being courageous enough to do this, uh, but this is a show that you need to hear, because I want to give you some kind of idea of what it's like being on uh, anxiety meds. And depression meds while you're in prison, right? So sit back, relax, and I hope you learn something from this show. So what's up, brother? Hey, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, no problem. I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, I've been trying to find somebody to do a show like this for a long time, right? Um, but let me just get off, off the top, and I'm going to ask you a few questions. This is the Lady Foundation before we get into uh, all of the other questions that I have, right? Um, just so you know, I'm not interested in why you're in prison. I don't think that matters in this situation, okay? I am... Uh, I'm not interested in how long you have, you know what I'm saying, your sentence. What I want this interview to be about is you and your uh, life, how do you navigate this environment uh, with mental health issues, okay? That's what's important for me in this interview. So, um, did were you on meds before you came, before you got locked up in jail? Yeah, prior, prior to coming to prison, I was um, on medication for depression. And do you mind if I ask you what type of meds you were on? I was taking Zoloft. Zoloft? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's yeah. for depression. Right. Got it, got it, got it. And uh, what led to you being on Zoloft, if you um, don't mind? Well, actually, I wasn't even aware that I had a, had an issue with depression. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend's the one that... Um, kind of picked up on it. Yes. And, you know, I went to, I was like, no, I don't have depression. At first, I was like, mm. no, I'm not depressed. But right. um, I started going to see a counselor. She taught me into seeing a counselor. Good. And um, saw a counselor. And, you know, by talking to her about issues in my past, mm -hmm. it turns out that I've been depressed for most of my life. Mm. And you had no idea. I had no idea. What was it that tipped your girlfriend to suggest that you might have? What kind of behavior were you exhibiting that she thought this might be depression? What were you doing? Um, I would, she said I would isolate myself away from her a lot. She always had the feeling that I was cheating on her with someone, but I just really, you know, just didn't feel like being around her. Yeah. Know? Yeah. She felt that I didn't care about her, but I explained to her that I did. So um, mm. it, was, it was. She had a lot of conflicting things, you know. I would say one thing, but then she's seeing and feeling another thing. Got it. Got it. And so, mm -hmm. um, and then I know a lot of times she would try to call me, and I just wouldn't answer. And I just. Yeah. And, then, you know, and that's like, just because you, you just wanted to be alone. You thought that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought, to be you know, I just, you know, I mean, that's how, that's how I've been most of my life. Got it. You know, even when I had friends and stuff, you know, on, on the outside, you know, I was yeah. in a fraternity and had yeah. all different, had a social life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looking back on it, I've always just felt more comfortable um, just being by myself. Right, right. And some of those things that, you know, she helped me learn that it's not always healthy to, you know, keep stuff inside and, yeah. Not, not to talk about it. Right. And so you started talking to the doctor. Uh, how old were you when you first started talking to this uh, doctor? Um, I 
was in my thirties. In your thirties? Yeah. Yeah. Late thirties, I think. Yeah. Yes. And let me let me ask one thing real quick in relation to your doctor. Um because a lot of people uh may be suffering from depression or some other issue, uh, but can't afford to pay for how were you able to pay for your therapy sessions? Well I had insurance. You had insurance through my employer. Got it. And and they provided that. Well, so you have to pay the the um deductible the copay. Co mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You have to pay the copay, but right. other than that, I just you know yeah had it through the insurance. But mm -hmm. I do know that if you don't um, have insurance, you can go through. I think it's Medicaid. Medicaid. Um, what is it? The, not the one for the older. Medicare, Medicaid. Yeah. Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. I'm not sure. I am not sure. I think it's Medicaid. Okay. You can okay. go through them, mm -hmm. and um, I think you can get, get help. some help. Yeah, I just wanted to point that out because a lot of people may need the help but can't afford it. Yeah, you know what because I'm mm -hmm. at one point after I um, I wasn't I wasn't employed at one point, and so I wasn't able to go to this particular person. Mm -hmm. But I think I went through my, my girlfriend also found this resource for me. Got it. Um, Got it. I went through Medicaid, and I mm -hmm. was actually able to go it was a it was actually a day clinic to mm -hmm. where they offered um, a counselor, a psychiatrist, group therapy. It was like all That's in good one. Stuff, but okay. I would go there for like I think six hours out of the day. Mm -hmm. So And how did she find that information? Um, to know that that resource was available in your neighborhood, in your community. She searched around. Oh she's a very resourceful woman. Okay. So I mean it it, I, it was out there to be found. She just looked okay. for ways so so I could still receive mental health care Got even it. though I didn't have the funds through my insurance Got to it. cover it. Okay. Okay, so let's get to the, the, the conversations with your doctor. Just a little bit. I don't want to get into details of that. I think that should uh, always uh, remain private. But when you started talking to uh, the doctor, uh, what was that like? What was that initial uh, assessment like? Was it hard for you? Did you did it take a while for you to open up? How did you feel about it? Well, were you a reluctant patient? Well, kind of like you know, because some things can be embarrassing to speak on. So you you don't want to you know talk about yourself. I mean, not a lot of people want to talk about their self in a negative way, or yeah. so they're looked down upon. Yeah. And so I had to get over that over that hump and you know she you know she automatically explained that you know I'm not judgmental I don't care you know this was remains confidential Absolutely. but still there's that thing that you have to deal with your internal ego I guess yeah yeah and not yeah. um just being open forth with everything even even the negative things I think yeah. that that can be a bit of a challenge yeah so and it can be hard to talk about too because absolutely a lot of those things you know you you don't want to think about anymore. you don't want to think about it now let's talk about it. yeah so um when you finally started to open up to her um what was that like it was almost like meeting a stranger Mm -hmm. Or meeting, let's say you're meeting a, a you know someone that you're attracted to. Not saying that I was attracted to her. Absolutely. But it's like you're in a conversation with a stranger, and um, obviously a stranger who you don't have any rapport with, you're not going to open up to them. Right. So I guess the initial point we you know we got to know one another. She told me about her, then I told me about myself. Yeah. And we just I just start opening up and just explaining some of the things that made me feel sad. Yeah. Um, a lot of it had to do with um, my childhood, how yeah. I was raised. Yeah. Um, and then we, she made a connection. I guess somehow she was able to make connections out of the things that I was saying. Mm -hmm. And it kind of just made sense yeah. To, yeah. The, um, to the diagnosis that she came to. So you came to trust her, and so you felt safe enough to open up to her. Eventually, yeah. Eventually, eventually. Mm -hmm. Okay, um... Did she, so she's the one that uh, initially uh, decided, to, uh, with your consent, that you should be on meds. Is that how that came about? Yes, she said it would help. She said... Tell me about that conversation. What was that like when she su suggested that you might be helped by being on some medication? I was very reluctant because I've never been on 
I was a I was a person who didn't like medications unless I had to take it. I've always prided myself on being healthy. Yeah. You know, and then when, you know, when she said that, well, maybe you might need medication, immediately I thought, oh, I'm going to be on crazy meds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And what was your idea of that? What that mean, crazy meds? You know, when, when people take, you know, pills for their mental health, when, you know, when, you know I'm, I'm 40, what am I? I'm 46 now. So okay. when I was raised, um, it was always that stigma of any person who takes Actually, any person who takes any kind of medication yeah, is, something's wrong with is either weak or inferior or something's mm-hmm. wrong with them, like you said. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, that's one of the things I always pride myself in not being... That you were not that yeah. person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's a, a big problem, especially um, in the black community when it comes to the stigma that's attached to, uh, first off, just seeking help and then <laughs> being on the medication itself. But I think that um, if, if it'll help, I think that people should be open to that. I just think that we need to be more supportive of each other um, in our communities, no matter what the race is, when somebody needs some mental health uh, assistance when it comes to medication. Um, but tell me, you know, what was it like when you, uh, you decided, okay, I'm going to go along with this, and you took the meds? What was that, if you can remember, it's, it's been, I'm sure it's been a while, but how was it the first, when you first took them? Because a lot of people tell me that uh, when they first get on any type of meds like that, it, it messes with the, you know what I'm saying, um, energy, that they, they feel sluggish. What was it like for you? Yeah, I'll never forget it because <laughs> I know at first it was a, she started me on a small dose, like yeah. it was real small. Yeah. But as soon as I took the pill, like within two hours, I had to go to the toilet. Really? Yeah, it gave me diarrhea. Yeah. And did, she, was, did she let you know that that might be a possible She side did. Effect? She yeah. did. And that was, that's one of the many side effects that this mm-hmm. particular medication has. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I felt sick. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, I don't want to take this. So I stopped right. taking it. Right. And when I saw her again, she's like, no, you need to you know, work through it. It's going to go away. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I started taking them again. And the biggest thing she said that you'll know it's working when you really can't tell a difference. And it didn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense at all. It, I mean, it, it still yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I guess the whole thing is is with the medication is not to alter or change drastically how you act. It's just a very subtle change. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's supposed to... I mean, at that time, it was supposed to, I guess, increase, make my mood better. Yeah. You know, make yeah. me um, less sad. Did you? And how long was it before you noticed that change? I don't think I ever really noticed it, but mm. I kind of noticed over, I don't know, like, when. Did your girlfriend notice it? She did. She but, noticed the change? Yeah, but I never really noticed it. Well, that's good though. I mean, that's pretty much what the doctor meant, right? Yeah, and that's and that's that's what they were. That's yeah. the, the target that they was Got know, it. trying to. So that's good. But that's the, good. the one thing I did hate about it was it made me sleepy, it made me tired, and that's. I've what, heard that a lot about. And those. it took a while. I can't remember. It took months for my body to adjust. Mm-hmm. It took. You know, it took months. I was yeah. always sleeping. Was it any time during that time that you wanted to stop taking it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my, yeah, my girl's kind of adamant about it. So, I mean, I saw how serious she was, you know, so I yeah. wanted to um, make sure I was doing all the right things that I could to help myself. So, so she was very supportive then. Mm-hmm. So, you need somebody if you're going to end up in a situation like If you end up in a situation like that, you need somebody around you that's supportive, that can encourage you. You think that's important? I think that's real important, especially for someone who is not um, enthusiastic about <laughs> yeah, the, you Being know, on the meds. Yeah, yeah, taking the meds and, and right. seeking help because a lot of times people don't even, like I said, in my case, I didn't even know that there was an issue with me. Right. You know, my mom hinted around like, there's something wrong with that boy. When you were younger? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, but... You know, we never really... Never followed through? Yeah, I mean, I had a counselor um, when I was younger when my parents went through a divorce. That Mm -hmm. kind of affected me. 
Yeah. But I was, it was never suggested at that time, not that I can remember, that I need to be that on you need medication. To be, be there. So tell me, let's fast forward a little bit. Um, you get arrested, whatever uh, the situation is, and you're in the county jail. Yeah. So is that when you were... Uh, put on anxiety meds? Yeah, that's when I first started, but it, it, it was about maybe a year and a half. After, while you, you've yeah. been in the county jail yeah, for I've been a year in, and a half. In a year, about a year and a half, and then I, um, I think the conditions, and what I realized, like, I guess being in prison, it gives you a lot more time to focus on yourself if you choose to. Right. And to focus on your behaviors and the way you act. And so, being in the county jail, I had nothing but time. There was no activities to do. Mm. There was no outlet for me to... Were you still taking your depression meds? Yeah, I was still on my okay. depression medication. Okay. Um, but it was just nothing for me to do there. And I guess it had built up over time to where um, I explained it to the, to the, um, the counselor. At the jail? At the jail. Okay. And they suggested um, anxiety medication. So was it a mental health counselor or was it just... Yes, it was a mental health counselor. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. Yeah. That's good stuff. But the only thing about that is, when, you know, I kind of heard that um, a lot of people, they're, they're very forthcoming about giving people anxiety medications because they know about the conditions and stuff. So it, it's, all, it's, it's the scrutiny is not as much as when you're on the street. Because, mm -hmm. like, um, when you're on, I guess when you're on the street... They, um, in my case, the counselor or the psych, the psychiatrist is actually one that um, suggested, okay. you know, she, she's the one that diagnosed me. Right. But she suggested other exercise before I opt for the medication. The medication was so like a last, last, last resort. resort kind of thing. So what did she suggest that you do prior to being on the meds? Um, just different activities. Um, find something that makes me happy. Yoga. Um, that was one. That was I was already. I've been doing yoga for twenty years, so I, yeah. I was doing yoga already. Yeah. So there are a lot of things that I was already doing, but you know, I guess it still wasn't enough to help. It wasn't working. Mm -hmm. So okay, tell me what that was like when you got put on the anxiety meds. Did they tell you about any side effects? How did it uh, work with the Depression meds that you were already on were there any issues? Well, that's the thing. There, there were some issues, and um, mm. there, it's almost like you have to notify the doctor if there's like any side effects that you're, right. you know, un can't really handle. Yeah. And so the, I was at one point I had a seizure when I went to the went mm -hmm. to, when I went to the county jail, mm -hmm. and so I was on another medication too. Okay. It was um. I forgot the name of it. Mm -hmm. Another it was it another anxiety med no, or something for totally it was, different. It was for seizure and they say it was a mood stabilizer. Okay, so when did you get put on that at the jail? Yeah, like the I think the first day I got there I had a seizure. What? Yeah. Never from had stress. A, you think it was from stress? What do you think it was from? I don't know. I'm not sure. But, mm. Um. I don't know. But yeah, they said wow. I, I passed out. Um, people saw me shaking on the ground. And yeah, yeah. So they put me on that. Mm hmm Depakote. That was the name of it. That was the. Yep. And what is that? Depakote. It's it's um it's for seizures, and they said it's a mood stabilizer as well, because they saw that I was on for depression meds. So they okay, I got you, I got you. And so, um, I took that. So I was on the, the Zoloft and the Depakote. Then about a year and a half later. Um, put you on an anxiety med. Anxiety medication. What was that? Do you mind if I ask the name of the anxiety med? The one I was taking at the time was called Vistaril. Vistaril. Right. Vistaril okay. made me extremely sleepy. I did not like it at all. Mm -hmm. But it did calm me down because I felt like it was. It, it would be times when I would just be sitting in my cell and my leg would shake and I could not stop. Just anxious. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I wouldn't know why my leg is shaking, but it, it would just it would just be yeah going up and down. Yeah. I, I would go like this, and it right. would still it would right. still be and, moving. And you had no problems like that before you came to jail. None. Okay. Let me ask you. Let me let me back up a little bit. You just made me think of something. What 
was it other than you already being on meds that uh, if it was anything that made was it the jail that said okay we need to have you talk to the mental health specialist because you were on meds or did, or did you request to see somebody <laughs> My girlfriend. <laughs> oh, okay, then. Oh, called, you got to go. She called the jail and let them know yeah. that I was on um, medication yeah. for, for um, depression mm. and gave them the information from yeah. the clinic that I was previously at. Mm -hmm. So she's the one to notify them because uh, I guess I've been there for like three or four days and I explained it to them, but no one was doing anything about it. So I yeah. told her and so she... she she got the ball rolling on that. Yeah, family support, y'all. Remember that now, family support. Uh, so after that, okay, let me get back to where we're at then. So now you're on three different types of medicines, right? Yeah, so the side effects um, with the Depakote, I believe, with mm -hmm. the Vistaril, um, I had super hearing smell. The super heightened. Super, yeah. The really? Hy hy well, they call it, the psychiatrists down there call it hypersensitive. Really? Um, to smell and hearing. Mm -hmm. And I explained this to them. Well, it took them a while for them to take the, I, I believe it was the, the Depakote and the Vistaril. Mm -hmm. So they stopped giving me both of those, but it took a while for them to take me off. Right. Um, unfortunately, one of those side effects stayed with me. I have a constant ring. They, I've been diagnosed with um, really? tinnitus. Yeah. Or some people pronounce it tinnitus, but it's yeah. tinnitus. So I have like a, a ring that never goes away. In your ear all the time. Yeah, both ears. Yeah, so um, the anxiety mm -hmm. medication, on the other hand, it kind of helps with that. Because mm -hmm. it helps me, um, I guess the combination with the anxiety, anxiety medication, because I'm on two different kinds of anxiety medications now. Mm -hmm. They took the Vistaril. Once I found that it was a Depakote, because after the side effects went away, they put me back on the Vistaril. Mm -hmm. And the Vistaril made me so sleepy that I asked for something else. Mm -hmm. So they put me on Boost Bar. Mm -hmm. And the Boost Bar is for anxiety as well. Mm -hmm. It didn't make me as tired, but I don't think it was it was enough to, you know, just totally flatten my the anxiety levels that I had. Um, the, the anxious feeling, the always worrying, the constant thinking, um, mind going a, a thousand times a day, mm -hmm. just going around, can't sleep at all. Like I, it, it was hard for me to sleep. Yeah. Even being on Boost Bar is still hard for me to sleep. So they put me back on um, Visceral, just a lower dose. Mm -hmm. And I kind of found the right combination. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, over time, I realized that um, I guess because I come to know like how I was feeling. Yeah. that the medication had to be increased. So over time, the longer I stayed in the county jail, the higher doses they had to give me for my depression medication and my anxiety medication. Because it wasn't working at the doses you were on as effectively as it was when you first started? I think I became immune to it. I, okay. I, I bu or built a tolerance built to Built a tolerance it. for it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so um, one of the things that I also tried to work on was not using the medication and I found I tried not to take it and I found that that's like a big mistake did they know that no because well, I, okay. I just got tired I'm like I'm, I got tired of taking the medication all the time yeah um so well well yeah when they came and saw me um I just wouldn't take it yeah it's like well you know you have no I'm not taking it today and I noticed a lot of mood swings yeah. I noticed I actually got more angry when I wasn't on it then. <laughs> then when you were on it, get back on it. Yeah, so right. um, I had to just learn how to deal with it. So what was that process like as far as like um, when you stopped taking it, did anybody come to talk to you or did, was it just the nurse that was bringing it around and said, look, you know you need to be on this? Did they refer you to the psychiatrist to talk? Yeah, yeah. They, um, well, actually the... For a while, they didn't. I mean, the, the pill called nurse, they really didn't care where I was at. You know, if you take them, you take them. If you don't, you don't. Mm -hmm. But after a while, um, I was referred to um, the person who, the, I forgot what he called him. It wasn't a psychiatrist, but it was a mental therapist. health therapist. Mental health therapist. Mental health therapist. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he had asked me, you know, why, why aren't you taking this? And, you know, he explained the, you know, the, the, um, the, the harms of, drastically stopping yeah you know he wasn't against me not taking it but yeah. he just said there's a certain way to 
um, stop taking them that's to, to decrease the dosage mm. um, instead, of cold going, turkey. instead of going Thank cold turkey. You. Let me ask you real quick um, about, because you said something about the pill call message. They didn't really care if you took it or not. Uh, did you notice some indifference uh, from the people at the jail or um, that were responsible for, you know, the med being passed out? Did you notice, did they care? Did they not care? How, how did they act towards the people that were on medication like yourself at the jail? Well, it depends on which one you talk to. Yeah. You might get a, one out of a, a, you know, like a, like a needle out of a haystack. You might yeah. get one particular, we call them pill call nurses, the ones yeah. that, you know, that give us yeah. our pills. You might find one that seems real concerned about you. But even that person knowing how concerned and the, and the efforts they do, they know that the administration, on the other hand, they're not in line with our, with our best well-being. I mean, I mean, explain it to me. What do you mean by it? Um, for instance, if a person has, you know, like needs to talk to someone, yeah, it might take days for them to actually talk to someone. They have to go through paperwork and then sometimes they'll have it, it an emergency. If, yeah. if they do come up, yeah. the, the way it was where I was at, yeah. the person would just call you out in a hallway where people are walking up and down no problems. and ask you what your issue is. And so you have all these people. I was like, there, you know, because I had to talk to him a few times. I'm like, well, is there anywhere else we can go to work? It's like, well, no, this is, this is all we have. Wow. So yeah. in, in that kind of aspect, um, it's almost like they're indifferent. It's yeah. almost like they were doing this because they're required by law. Yeah. But they're doing the minimum. Yeah. Not because they care. Really. Yeah. yeah. Or had the uh, support right. to actually do it. Those that did care. Okay. Um. So when... You were at the county jail for how long on the meds? How long were you at the county jail? Four on years. Meds? Four years. Okay, when you were eventually uh, transferred to prison, uh, tell me what that was like for you um, mentally. Um, did you become anxious? Were you nervous? Uh, anything like that? It was a little, yeah, a little... A little scary, I guess. Scary. Not knowing, because I've been at that county jail for so long, so I got accustomed to it. Mm -hmm. And one thing I found is, um, I didn't know it looking back, like while I was at the county jail, I learned about um, some of the internal feelings that I had. Mm -hmm. And I always get like this funny feeling in my stomach, like I'm sick. Mm -hmm. And turns out, I guess that's just anxiety. Anxiety, right. And you know, I've been like this my whole life, but mm -hmm. never did I was able to identify exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. And so um, I came to actually learn myself and my, a little bit better mm -hmm. while I was incarcerated in the mm -hmm. county jail. Mm -hmm. So when I got to where I was going to the next step to the um, classification facility, I was a little bit nervous, mm -hmm. but um, over time, you know, it, it kind of went away. Well, what was the process like when you were at the uh what did you just call it? Classification. Classification. Center. What was it like there as far as your evaluation? Did they ask you about your meds, how you felt? Uh, did you need to talk to anybody? Did they do any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, it was very thorough. Very um, thorough. Good. It was, it was very thorough. It seemed like they put a lot a lot more work into oh, you know, finding out about myself and my needs, my mental health needs, than mm -hmm. when I was at the county jail. Okay. One thing they did find was that um, remember I said that over time I, they increased my medication mm -hmm. well they actually well this is what I told when I went to classification center they they gave me too much to where it was like medically dangerous for me to, to take so much mm. so they actually decreased uh, mm -hmm. um, the doses that I had on my medication did you notice a difference when they decreased it? Did it help I you? did I did notice a difference and I begged mm -hmm. them to, to put me back on it because oh. I, I needed it. It was drawn. Yeah. Um, I noticed that my ang my anger levels were going back up. Um, my anxiety levels were going back up. Just everything was wrong about me. Mm -hmm. I got to a space where I was comfortable with the... with the Where you were at. Where I, mean, I was at. The level. And when they took me off and they decreased it, you know, it was it was tough. It was tough. Yeah. Because, but they took you off uh, because they 
felt medically it was dangerous for you to be on that type of dosage. Right, combined with, because I also take um, medication for blood pressure and cholesterol. Right. So they looked at all of that and they said combined that it was it was too, too dangerous. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did that? Did you, Did you believe that? Yeah, I believe. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I mean, yes. I, I I didn't I didn't want them to decrease it, but, but you yeah. But I, mean, I had no choice to but too, to right? believe. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. So tell me, what's it like in prison, being on meds? I mean, how do you navigate this environment? Um. Do you Do you have problems with people? Do you interact well with others? You know what I'm saying? Do they know that you're on meds? And what's that like? Well, well, most people, well, being on meds, um, people know you're on it because you know we have. How a, do they know you are? They have a thing where we, um, they have a, um, they call it a pill call or what do you call it? Um, Medline. Medline. Okay. So. Mostly everyone who goes to the med line, they take a medication for it. Could be it could be medical or it could be mental health. Okay. But generally, the ones who go, you know, once a day or consistently, mm -hmm. most of them are for mental uh, health. For mental health, because mm -hmm. most of the medicine, they, the medical medication we have to um, take, they they give that to us and we can keep it on our person. But the mental health stuff. But the mental health. Can. Right, because they have to um, guard that. And so it has to be administered in front of the pill call nurse. Make sure you take it and all this stuff. Right. What's that process like? How do they make sure you take it? Um, they just give you a cup. You, you drink it? You drink it, and sometimes they'll, they'll check, have you open your open mouth. Open your mouth, all that. Um, okay. But I guess most, generally, they're supposed to do it every time, but normally the people who they already know and they know are taking their meds, yeah. they don't really go through that, that, yeah. that process. Okay, but they... Um, so, when you're doing, when you're taking your meds, um, nobody else sees you take your meds. No, it's always right. one person uh, at goes time. at a time. So, so it's they, privacy. Yeah, it, there yeah. is there is privacy. Okay, yes. did that. Um, so how do you get along with people in here with your anxiety? How does that work? Well, I've learned how to. I, one thing I've learned is that it's not the medication that you should depend on. It's only there to assist you. The, the, Explain that. Um, like for for your actions, mm -hmm. like anxiety, I might get anxious about something, and it might cause me to act a particular way. Mm -hmm. But I can't depend on. And, and I guess that's one thing I kind of learned when they decreased the meds, because mm -hmm. I realized that okay, they're not going to give me more, so I have to figure out a way to cope, to still maintain the way that I was before. So yeah. I kind of learned how to recognize that I was changing or that Your I triggers, was, what triggers you? Yeah, what, what triggers me mm -hmm. and to um, just step back and think. Sometimes I might have to step back away from what I'm doing or sometimes I might just have to think, take the time and just stop. So have you ever been in a situation like that with an officer or another inmate and they were understanding that you needed to step back? Do they know? Do the officers know that you are on mental health meds? And like I say, have you ever been in a situation like that where you could step back, take a pause, and they were accommodating? Or has it worked an opposite way for you? Uh, most of the officers don't know that we're on uh, uh, right. know our, know we're on medication, so they're not really trained to handle a situation and where a person who is having a mental health episode it's really the episode that they're dealing with and not the issue that's being, you know, at the forefront. Got it, got it. So luckily I haven't had really to deal with that that much. I've been able to, um, I'm kind of, I got, kind of got a real like, calm demeanor. Yeah. So I don't really have any issues with um, mm -hmm. staff, but I did have some with a few inmates. Okay. And so Describe it, one of those for me. In those times I would have to realize was this, something that I can control mm -hmm. or was it really something that needed to be handled because you know in certain in certain situations there's mm -hmm. times when um, people confront you and you have to either defend yourself or you know step back right and so when you're I guess when when you have anxiety mm -hmm. the I guess the the need to defend yourself is right at the forefront it's heightened Yes. Yeah. So, 
sometimes I find myself acting without thinking first. Yeah. And so that that was a challenge to do that. Right. Sometimes I fail. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all do. <laughs> Me as a nine. So. But over time, I, I've learned that um, there's there there's a way to handle that. And, mm-hmm. And one one of the things I've I've always used, but even before I came to prison, like I said, I, I practiced yoga, mm-hmm. and deep breathing. Got it. Deep breathing helps me slow my mind down, slow my thoughts mm-hmm. down, mm-hmm. and you know. So I, I'm, so like I guess instantaneous. I, I would call it instantaneous meditation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get it. It kind of helps me um, put things mm-hmm. in perspective put, and mm-hmm. what's important and. Mm-hmm what's not so important. So the people, the guys in here that know um, uh, that you're on meds, are they uh, helpful to you uh, or do they uh, ridicule you? What? Tell me. Well, you know, I guess the ones who, you know, there are, there's always that stigma of people who take, who take mental health meds. Yeah. I guess it depends on the individual because mm-hmm. I have seen other people who, you know, other people will talk about them because they're taking mental health meds. Mm-hmm. Um, particularly for me, I haven't had that much. Um, a lot of people that I'm around or that they know I take mental health meds, they mm-hmm. don't really, well, they don't say it directly to me. Right. Um, some people encourage me, oh, you need to go take your meds. Even the officers who know I take mm-hmm. meds, they're mm-hmm. encouraging about my home. You, you know, you might need to go, go take, take your meds. Yeah, just... So do you, um, the people that, um, the people that talk, make, talk about somebody else that's on mental health, man, how does it make you feel to hear them ostracize somebody else, not you, but ostracize somebody else that's on mental health, man? How does that make you feel? You know, I, I take offense from it, I guess, particularly because I want them to. So that's I, right. You know, because, I mean, really, they're talking, if they're talking like that about that person, they're talking about like that to me. Right. And so, um, so have you ever um, confronted, confronted that, person? that person? Yes. Most times I don't, because mm-hmm. it's none of my business. I mean, it's, right. I don't want I don't want to get involved on defending somebody else. Yeah. Now, if they were to say something to me, then I would explain, you know, how that makes me feel. Right. But I seriously doubt they would care anyway, because right. a lot of people who who do those types of things, they don't think about other people's feelings. They're only thinking about you know, yeah, something to say. Yeah, because a lot of people yeah. they just talk because just talk to be talking. Yeah, man. exactly. Yeah, want to make somebody laugh at somebody else's pain. I get that. Um, okay, I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna wrap this up, but before I do, I want to ask you: Is there anything that you would say to family members out there that uh, have somebody in their family that they love that they think might have an issue? Uh, or family members that have someone in prison that they think might need some help, what advice would you give them? Well, one of the things that, one of the best things that I think the, the counselor that I have now that uh, I see, yeah, she said, when you're in prison, now is the time to work on yourself because you have nothing to do but to work on yourself. Right. So if there's anyone who you think might need some type of help or mental health counseling or anything, they're, they they do have the time to do that here, and there are the resources to where they can contact someone and they can speak to someone about their issues and maybe address them while mm-hmm. they're here. And especially because you have the time to focus on yourself, you don't have as much distractions as you would on the street where you're able to. You have to go to work. You're on your your cell phone, or you're doing all going to different functions. There's less to do here, so there's more time to focus on yourself. That's good. That's good. Real quick, one more thing. I just, it just made me think of something when you said the counselor. Um, so how often do you get to see your counselor uh, in relation to your mental health issues? Is it like scheduled? Do you, is it as needed? How does that work? So it's every um, it's every three months for me, mm-hmm. depending on the person. Some people, mm-hmm. it's every six months. Mm-hmm. And like if you have an emergency, like if you feel like you really need to speak to someone, you're able to talk to them. They're there. But mm-hmm. although I felt, you know, I have had some emergency where I need to talk to her. Unfortunately, I felt like it was rushed. Like she was just, you know. Going just, through the motions. Yeah, going through the yeah. motions. But, yeah. you know, I mean, she was still there, but it's, I guess the, the quality wasn't quite there. I got it. I got it. Okay, good. I want to thank you, man, for doing this. Um, 
this is important. This is important stuff. Um, for all of y'all out there that's listening, I, you, you know what I'm on. I'm about therapy. And I want to encourage you to um, seek help if you need it. If you think you need it, seek help. If you have family members in or outside of prison, uh, seek help. Uh, if you need some uh, information or, about uh, resources available, hit me up in my comment section or you can hit me up in my email at doingtimewithjoe at gmail.com and, and I'll have somebody research that for you and we'll figure out something, you know what I'm saying, to get you some help, you know what I mean? But don't just rely on the old adage of, you know, you'll grow out of it, I'll get better. I just don't believe that's true, right? This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all.